Well, hello, hello, everyone. It's Shanti Titus here with Proper Remote Financial Services. Today, we're going to talk about Schedule C. Schedule C's are essentially what is needed that has to be filed if you have a single member LLC or if you are a sole proprietor for the year. The IRS does not recognize a single member LLC. What that means essentially is that the income and expenses all flows through onto your 1040 um, form that when you file your taxes. However, the Schedule C is the outline of that. So one of the things that you need to make sure that you have before you do your Schedule C is your profit and loss statement for the year. Essentially, it is the IRS version of your profit and loss statement. So have that handy so you won't have to be um, wasting time or spending more time than you need to on filling out your um, Schedule C for the year. So I'm going to pull it up here. So just to point out some key things. Okay, so in this situation, um, example actually, I pretended that I was dealing with a beauty salon. So that's gonna be the principal business for or service for this particular um, example. This is for 2020. And then you have to enter a code, which was a, a sign by the IRS for your industry. And this is easy to find. It's really, it's on the IRS website. But it's also is just on the um, instructions for the Schedule C. So as you can see, uh, for beauty shops, the code is eight one two one one two. If you're not, if you're in another industry, you simply find out, find your industry on here, and you're going to utilize that code in that section right here. Okay. The next thing you need the business name, which you're going to put your EIN number here. Okay. Then you're going to use utilize the cash method more than likely, especially if you're um, not in the making millions of dollars in revenue just yet. And you're just going to answer these questions. Did you materially participate in the business? Like meaning, were you actively working in the business or was it passive? If it was passive, the answer would be no. If you were acting in the business, it's going to be yes. All right. If you started this business in 2020, then you need to check this box. And then did you make any payments? in 2020 to like vendors um, that required a 1099. If you paid anyone over $600, then a 1099 is required, okay? So you would check that box. And then did you actually file your 1099s? You would check that box, all right? In this example, you know, I just um, pretended that we made $100,000 for this uh, fictitious beauty supply, or beauty salon actually. So it's 100,000. There were no returns or anything, so then you just bring it down. So you would subtract one, uh, the two from the one line, which there was nothing there. So we just brought it down, which is 100. And four asked for cost of goods sold, there was nothing there. And then this ends up, your gross profit is 100,000. And you're just going to bring that down because we didn't deal with any gasoline or fuel tax or anything like that. All right. And so this is where, you know, you're looking at your profit and loss statement here while you're filling this out. You, um, you know, we had advertising because we had to advertise for our business. And then we also had all, we had rent for our salon. So that was two, two grand per month. So it's $12,000. And then we had other expenses. So any expenses that do not fit into these categories, as far as office expense, rent, or repairs, anything that does not fit into this will go to other expenses. So in this case, it's 10000 Take a look at this though. It says line 48. Where is line 48? Well, if you go down, you will have to list out your other expenses. So you will list out whatever those were. In this case, we just did 5,000 and 5,000. Total it out. This is line 48. And you're going to take this 10,000 and put it on line 27, like it says down there. 27A. You're going to bring that 10,000 up here, which is right there. Okay. So at this point, you're going to add up all of the lines from 8 to 27A, which 8 starts here, and you will just add all of this up. And in this case, it's 27. And we're going to subtract our 100,000 from our 27, which gives us our profit. Essentially, this is going to be our taxable income. This number is going to roll onto our 1040, and that is the amount that is going to we're going to be taxed on okay so that is how you do your schedule c this is for if you are a single member llc or sole proprietor 
make sure you check out the instructions for the Schedule C to get your codes for your industry, all right? Hopefully this information was helpful to you. If you need assistance, you can reach out to me. Email is the best way to reach out to me. It's ashanti at profit-mode.com. We can help you to get your accounting in position and in place because one of the things you need to know and realize and understand that if you don't, if you have a poor system of keeping up, keeping track of your income and expenses, it's going to be very just terrifying and annoying and all types of other things, unnecessary stress that's going to be coming to your business in relation to accounting if you don't have your systems in place. So for 2021, to take your business to the next level and to have that sense of security and knowing that your items are, are done. Go ahead and get you a, an accounting professional that will assist you with that. All right. So at the end of the year, you don't have to worry about it. Literally, your profit and loss statement will be done if you're doing it throughout the year. All right. So email me, ashanti at profit-mode.com. Also, you know, um, if you found this video helpful, just click on the subscribe button and then give this video a thumbs up. That helps us to grow our community here. Um, I'm here striving to help as many entrepreneurs as I can. Um, with what I know, which is what I know is bookkeeping and accounting. All right. Keeping that part good. All right. And I'll see you next time. Stay profitable and stay great. Bye.